last piece. I'm going to use run to cursor again just to get right to this first line. And so what run to cursor does is it runs the debugger mm -hmm. until it hits that line of code. And then I'm going to say run to cursor again. There's a shortcut key, control F10. Yep. And we'll see that uh, the serial version takes um, about 4.6 right. seconds. Okay. So if I had gone the other way around, I would have sped this up by about three seconds. Sure. Yeah. And the neat thing with run to cursor is instead of having to set breakpoints, if you're just doing a one off measurement, I yep. can just press control F10, control F10, control F10, measure from here to here to right. here to here. Right. Cool. Um, so that's all I was going to show on CPU and the perf tips. Excellent. And uh, Charles can actually dig a little bit more into the memory aspects of these okay. tools for us. Cool. Cool, cool. cool. Nope. All right. Thank you. And here's Charles. Great. All right. Top that, if you will. Uh, sure. Well, <laughs> I am going to demonstrate the new memory usage tool uh, that runs while debugging uh, using the same app that, uh, that Dan was just demoing for us here. Uh, the photo filter. Um, uh, just to sort of refresh, uh, on the left I've got a, a virtualized list of thumbnails and then mm -hmm. one big image in the middle. And uh, so I have an expectation uh, that I am going to um, be pretty judicious in my memory use as the application starts up. Okay. Because the virtualized list should load the data that I need as it needs it and not all at once. Um, so uh, however, I saw something uh, while we were doing the demo uh, that made me think that is not what's happening. And I saw that uh, in the new um, memory usage graph. That's part of the diagnostic tools window. So if we just watch here, I can collapse debugger events because that's not all that I'm interested in. Uh, right here, mm. this run up in memory, mm -hmm. uh, this is a concern for me. So this is something I want to investigate. I know this is part of my startup path. And once again, we're loading images, so it's probably a good bet to start uh, back at our load images uh, method right here. Uh, one of my favorite things about bringing the memory usage tool into the debugger is the fact that I can use the debugger to help control the investigation. Right. I don't have to try to, to guess where it is I need to look. Um, I can use, perf I can use uh, breakpoints, and I mm -hmm. can use stepping. Um, uh, to really, really get uh, finer grain control. So I'm just going to step through uh, this one by one, and I'm going to watch the memory graph here uh, and, and just see what happens. Uh, not much. Let that run. Uh, complete the step. All right. We used a, a bit more there. We're at 25. Um, and then right here, uh, when I stepped over mm. load images from disk, that's the spike that I saw before. Okay. Uh, so I've now narrowed this down that, that the big part of my memory problem is this guy right here, load images from disk. Um, the memory usage tool is a snapshot moment in time base. So I, I do need to decide that at this point in time is, is where I want to look at the heap. And the snapshots will allow me to investigate all the types uh, that were live on the heap um, at the time I took the snapshot. So I'm just going to set my breakpoint there. Uh, restart debugging one more time uh, so that I can set uh, a good baseline right before load images from disk runs and mm -hmm. then take another snapshot right after. All right, great. So here in the memory usage tab, really easy to just take a snapshot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to step. And then I'm going to take another snapshot. And then you're going to compare the two snapshots to see what is what is eating up the additional memory. You've, exactly. You've narrowed it down to the line of code, but you still need to know what's going on. Correct. Okay. Uh, and we get a high-level overview on the snapshot tiles. Uh, yep. You can see we've got the, the, the bytes that are live on the heap, the number of objects that are live on the heap, and subsequent snapshots will show me the diff in size okay. uh, and objects. Um, so clicking one of these links will actually take me into uh, the heap view. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to move this uh, over here so I have a little more uh, room to look at it. Now, in the heap view, uh, we see all of the types uh, that were live on the managed heap uh, at the time I took the snapshot. Uh, we do have just my code on right now. I can resize 
uh, all the columns, and, and more importantly, I can sort the columns. So I'm going to sort okay. by count diff. Um, I've got a lot of framework types that my photo filter types are referencing. Uh, but right here, towards the top of the list, photo filter .image item, uh, this is probably one that I want to investigate because it's, it's a type that's actually in my project. Okay. Now down in the bottom pane, I have the references graph, which shows um, the types that are being retained by image item uh, in reference types, and then the types that are being retained, that are retaining image mm -hmm. item, uh, which is paths to root. So I'm going to start in reference types, and we can see here, um, we've got four types. Now based on the count diff and the total size, um, if I was investigating this, I might think that string is likely to be my problem. Uh, it's got the biggest amount, but those 52,000 bytes don't nearly account for uh, uh, all of you know what I saw. And knowing that some types, like bitmap image, um, are not just managed objects. They decode mm -hmm. their data on the native heap. That, uh, in the current version of the tool, gets masked from you. Uh, so I am going to go, you know, based on what I know with bitmap image, and think that might be a good place to start. Okay. Especially since it's an image, uh, you know, an image filtering app. Uh, from here, I can go to definition or find all references. So I'm going to go to definition for my type. Uh, bitmap image right here is the one I want. So mm -hmm. I'm going to see how uh, was this field used. And it looks like we've got two places. Uh, one inside this uh, photo property, which loads the actual image uh, on demand when the property is called. And then here in load image from disk, which is on our startup path, and it looks like the intent was to preload all of the images, mm. which would explain perhaps the run up in memory that we saw right. on the graph. So then we have to decide. Do we want to preload them all, or do we want to be more conservative with our memory use? Uh, I am going to opt for more conservative memory use here. And I'm just going to comment out these two lines. And if I've understood everything correctly, uh, the photo should still load just fine, but now the memory use is going to be uh, a lot more judicious. So leaving this... It, hmm? it takes each photo a little bit longer to load, though? Is that a trade-off that we're making here? Uh, potentially. And, okay. and generally, you know, when you are uh, looking at performance issues, there's, there's usually a trade-off. Right. Um, you know, do you need to optimize for a low memory device? Um, or do you need to optimize for speed? Yep. You know, what sort of characteristics is it that you're looking for? Um, and then there's always the question of, it might take a little bit longer to load, but mm -hmm. is the user actually going to notice that it took longer? Right. Um, so it's something worth investigating. Uh, I'm going to leave my same breakpoint in place, and I'm just going to confirm that I have, in fact, solved that spike that worried me. We'll hit the breakpoint. Okay, and you can, you know, repeat your steps, take one more step, and I can immediately see that the spike at the same point it's in code is so much, much less. smaller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the virtualized list, we gave it a chance to do its work, and our memory use, uh, looks like uh, that problem at least is solved. Yep, very cool. Great. Cool, awesome, great stuff. Thanks. A couple of other things, neat things there. You'll notice that the perptit number for that line of code went down as well because yes. we're doing less image loading on the startup path. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You can come back on. Yeah, right. Oh, I should mention, uh, the memory usage tool does work for managed and native okay. um, and certain flavors of mixed mode as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool stuff. Yep. So, th again, this is stuff that uh, is in the current CTP. Mm -hmm. So between now and release, is, are there any things you can share with us in terms of things we might expect to get between now and then or things that might be on your list of things that you might wind up putting into updates? I and mean, if the answer is no, that's fine, but... Nothing we can share now, but we're, you know, <laughs> okay. we're just continuing to work on improving this and adding as much as we can. All right, high-level yeah. general direction um, in the future, where might we see this stuff go? Uh, it's just easier to use. We just okay. made it so that all you have to do is press a 5. Okay. That's what we want to try and do, create more experiences that they don't need you to configure settings, mm -hmm. um, go through a, a different workflow than what you're used to. Right. We want to make all the tools available to you immediately. So just make it part of what you do mm -hmm. and not this separate thing that you have to go remember and do and, and mm -hmm. kind of learn how to use. That's right. You might see more deeper integration with more of the debugging experience in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of people ask for 
more information in the perf tips or uh, if you've looked at the new breakpoint settings dialogue, some people have asked for more performance related actions in there. Mm -hmm. it's all stuff we're thinking about, but we can't make any uh, sure. promises at this point in time. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll do whatever we can to <laughs> make this stuff really work for our users. All right. Yeah. Cool. This is awesome stuff. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having us. us. Hope you like that. Let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.